What's up, Vivans? Happy Monday. Yes, Monday. Uh, it's day 10. Can you believe it? I am so excited to be on day 10, but I'm also uh, kind of disappointed that we only have two more nights left after this. And I did get a little sneak peek at the next two nights. You've got some pretty, you've got a very esoteric wine tomorrow, but today we've got one of my favorites. We've got Chateau Neuf de Pop. So this is Domaine de la Graverette. I'm not saying that right. Uh, from Chateau Neuf de Pop. Hello. Um, just to uh, begin briefly, I will give you a quick overview of what I'm doing. This is the 12 Nights of Wine Wine Box by the Glass from Vine Box, the box that gives you wines by the glass uh, for the holidays to get you through without too much trouble. Wow, everybody's coughing today. Um, so today we are talking about uh, Chateau Neuf de Pop. That Vine Box uh, box is going to be linked below and Hello, Gregory. Bonjour. Um, that vine box will be linked below, and uh, just so you know, you're not going to be getting the same box moving forward. We did have a little bit of mishap, um, so some of you got different boxes than I have. Anyway, the boxes are freaking fantastic. I've loved everything that's in them. Some of the wines will be different, but uh, some of them will repeat. So let's get into the tasting, shall we? Chateau Neuf de Pop. Um, those of you unfamiliar, uh, Chateau Neuf de Pop is a blend, nine times out of ten, usually dominated by Grenache and it's found in the Southern Rhone in France and it's a wine that in New York I loved to introduce people to who had more of a California palette those that really liked something with a little bit more fruit something that felt a little more sun-kissed that was a slightly riper uh, and wanted to sort of transition into European wines from the old world uh, or old world styled wines. so this was always a great place for me to take them because Typically, Chateau Neuf de Pop has a lot of fruit, has a lot of softness, it's very lush. Um, not all are created equal, and because of Chateau Neuf de Pop laws, the wine can be made from 13 different varietals, uh, usually dominated by Grenache. And I'm not sure what this is gonna bring. This is a 2014, 2014 was an average vintage in Chateau de Pop. Not great, not terrible, but not a super ripe vintage like 2010 or 2015. So if you're out in the wine store looking for a nice ripe bottle of Chateau de Pop, look for those vintages. If you want something a little more even keeled, I would say lean towards 2014, um, something a little lighter in style, uh, the middle vintages between, so 11, 12, 13. So let's get into the wine. I'm guessing before I get into this, there's gonna be a lot of strawberry in the nose. I had a great bottle of Grenache last night at Bouchon and um, a great glass of Grenache, I didn't have the whole bottle. Uh, and it was really, really riddled with a lot of strawberry Kirschy notes and uh, I'm guessing that's what's on the nose, but let's see what we have. We have strawberry. Um, yeah, so one of the reasons I love Grenache is it always smells a little bit like a strawberry fruit roll up and in like a really nice way. So if you've ever had a strawberry fruit roll up, the gummy snack that you had as a kid, I that's typically one of my markers. I get a lot of strawberry, a lot of kirsch, and that sort of just slightly overripe strawberry, maybe it's been left on the vine too long, maybe you mashed it up, maybe you even turn it into a pie, that's typically what I get on the nose. Now, because this is likely a blend, I'm getting a lot of other things, a lot of savory spices, a lot of other, um, other non-fruit things um, <laughs> wine and childhood memories uh, yes exactly I love when I can like tie in some things that I had as a kid like gushers or fruit roll-ups or things like that into wine tasting notes because those memories those like sensory memories are so so powerful that if you can assign those things to what you're smelling and what you're tasting I find that they're even more powerful than anything else because there's they're just so ingrained so I've always left that strawberry fruit roll up as my marker for Grenache and I totally encourage you guys to do the same if you if you find something of the equivalent don't think that just because it's a kid thing that it's uh, irrelevant or it doesn't work so uh, let's move on to the palette mm. so what I love about Chateau Neuf de Pop and why I love it as a transition wine is it gives you all of the fruit that you're looking for, but it typically has these really nice savory elements and then it also has uh, a little bit more tannin, so it has slightly more grip. So it gives you all the fruit, all of the lushness that you're looking for, but it starts to dive into those like dried areas, those dried herbs, really nice dry tannins that you typically get in regions like Bordeaux, even in the Northern Rome with like a Cote Roti or other um, French and European regions uh, like in Italy. So it starts to sort of get your palate acclimated to some of those things are, that are a little bit more unfamiliar and um, it starts to build a, a little bit of a baseline for you to understand what that feeling feels like without 
without navigating too far from the really rich, lush wines of California and um, maybe more specifically Napa Valley. Let's go in for another sip. Texturally, this wine is really nice. Medium body, it's not a huge bottle of wine, but it's got a really nice uh, viscosity to it. It's not super, super weedy. It's definitely more full body than something like a Pinot, lighter than a Cabernet. So again, something that I really love to serve to people that are sort of in between or, or recommend to people that are in between. You know, I've got a lot of guests that love Cab. I've got a lot of guests that love Pinot. What should I serve? Chateau Neuf de Pop all day long. I love it as a party wine. I find that it's normally a crowd pleaser and I also find that there's a ton of value in Chateau Neuf de Pop. I can find great bottles of Chateau Neuf de Pop like Chateau Le Neuf. Um, what else is really great? There's a million great producers. I'll put them in the comments below so you guys can have a little bit of a resource to find some great Chateau Neuf de Pops. Um, but it is one of the regions that I love taking people to and introducing people to because it is such a friendly, friendly wine most of the time. Mm. One more sip. Fruit quality on the palate, not as much of that super, super ripe strawberry, but it's still definitely there. Just kind of cusping on the edge of being slightly, slightly overripe, but not quite there. Acid's great, viscosity's uh, medium. Um, you can kind of see the legs going down. They're moving a little bit slowly. Um, beautiful, beautiful wine. A wine that's gonna want a little food, but can be drunk on its own. So I recommend doing this with maybe like a braised short ribs, some mashed potatoes, comfort food. Think comfort food when you think of Chateau Neuf de Pop and the region of Southern Rhone. You always wanna go for that like nice slow braise, something that's gonna take a little longer to cook. Uh, this wine's gonna pair really, really beautifully with that. So that said, uh, we've got two more days left, guys. The link for the box will be below. If you haven't gotten your box, get your box. It's a lot of fun. And uh, maybe go back and try to find some of the wines that might be uh, the same as what you have as well. It's been a blast. I uh, had an awesome day today and I went to Larkmead and tasted some of their recently bottled 2016s just to get that on your radar, guys. 2016 in Napa is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous vintage. I am super excited about what's happening in Napa in this, for the 16 vintage. So if you are thinking about uh, buying some bottles of wine and uh, see some of the 16s coming out, I think it's gonna be a stellar vintage. You're gonna see a lot of really great scoring wines from Napa Valley. So just a little vintage update for you guys. I have to get to work. It's time to be a sommelier on the floor here at Press. So thank you so much for watching. It's been a joy and I will see you again tomorrow for day 11 of the 12 Nights of Wine live tasting. See you later.